the latest developments from the Gaza, at least 27 Palestinians, among them many children and women, were killed in overnight Israeli assaults on Rafah and Gaza City. At the World Economic Forum, Egypt's foreign minister expressed optimism, citing a new proposal for a Gaza ceasefire. Devastation of uh, human loss uh, in terms of civilian casualties uh, does necessitate an immediate ceasefire so that we can elevate the, the uh, assistance and so that we can avoid uh, further casualties and, and the displacement. Uh, of course, uh, for a negotiation to be successful, it needs political will on both sides. It needs moderation and it needs a recognition that it is in the best interest of all involved and the region that uh, this conflict uh, is terminated, that we uh, have to look to a political horizon that can uh, address the comprehensiveness of the Palestinian question, creating security for Israel, creating security for the Palestinians, and that can only happen through the implementation of a two-state solution, the creation of a Palestinian state. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken voiced hope for Hamas' acceptance of what he terms an extraordinarily generous offer. A major effort that's been made um, over the last couple of months to get to that ceasefire, to get the hostages out. And right now, as you said, uh, Hamas has before it a proposal that is extraordinarily, extraordinarily generous uh, on the part of Israel. And in this moment, the only thing standing between the people of Gaza and a ceasefire is Hamas. They have to decide, and they have to decide quickly. So we're, we're looking to that, um, and I'm hopeful that they will make the right decision and we can have a fundamental change in the, in the dynamic. While UK Foreign Minister David Cameron unveiled a proposed 40-day ceasefire deal. Let's be frank, a very generous offer of a you know, sustained 40-day ceasefire, the release of potentially thousands of Palestinian prisoners in, in return for the release of these hostages who've now been in captivity for over 200 days. Um, so I hope Hamas do take this deal and frankly all the pressure in the world and all the eyes of the world should be on them today saying take that deal. Although talks are imminent as a Hamas delegation prepares to meet with officials in Cairo, the key issues persist. Israel seeks a truce, while Hamas insists on a complete halt to hostilities. On the other hand, within Israel, hardline ministers issued a stark warning to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. They cautioned that his government risks collapse should a truce be brokered with Hamas in exchange for captives. In grim statistics, the toll of violence mounts. Since 7 October, a staggering 34,488 Palestinians have been killed with 77,643 others wounded in Israeli attacks on Gaza. On the sidelines of World Economic Forum in Riyadh, Saudi Commerce Minister Majid al kaspi reaffirmed Pakistan as a priority for investment and trade, echoing directives from Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Plans are underway to elevate bilateral economic ties over the next 12 to 18 months, with a delegation from Saudi Arabia slated to visit Pakistan soon. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif engaged in a separate discussion with billionaire philanthropist Bill Gates. Emphasizing Pakistan's relentless efforts to eradicate polio, the Premier expressed gratitude for ongoing support from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Gates, recalling successful immunization programs in Punjab under Shahbaz's leadership, advocated for replicating similar strategies nationwide. Amidst a whirlwind weekend, PM Shahbaz clinched investment assurances from Saudi Arabia, earning accolades for his proactive approach. Further engagements saw the PM meeting with key Saudi officials including Crown Prince Salman, Minister for Investment Khalid al Falia. Minister for Finance Mohammad Al Jadan and Minister for Industry Bandar bin Ibrahim Al Khaurif, praised as a man of action by Minister Al Falia. Additionally, Shahbaz's engagement with International Monetary Fund Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva underscored Pakistan's commitment to economic reform. Georgieva commended discussions on policy reforms aimed at fostering inclusive growth and addressing challenges facing Pakistan's economy. This has been the latest update from the World Economic Forum in Riyadh. 
China hinted at potential retaliation on Monday following US President Joe Biden's signing into law legislation aimed at bolstering Taiwan's defenses and pressuring TikTok's Chinese owner to divest from the social media platform. Biden approved the legislation which includes a military aid package predominantly allocated to Ukraine in light of Russia's invasion and to Israel. He also signed a separate bill linked to the aid package that mandates the banning of TikTok in the United States if its Chinese owner ByteDance fails to divest the app within the next 9 months to a year. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Lin Jian, speaking from Beijing, urged the United States to refrain from implementing the negative China related aspects of the legislation Lin stated if the United States persists in its current course China will take resolute and forceful steps to firmly defend its own security and development interests without providing further details despite the absence of formal diplomatic ties the United States remains Taiwan's key international supporter and arms provider China however considers Taiwan as its own territory and has consistently demanded an end to arms sales to the island Taiwan's democratically elected government which disputes China's sovereignty claims has expressed approval of the new legislation asserting that it will contribute to regional security maintenance